the channel, mate. Thank you so much for picking me to do this because um, I bet people are lining up. So, um... uh, yeah, let the viewers know what we got. Hi, bud. Uh, thanks for having me back. Uh, this is the Mercedes Sprinter 4x4 Ape Style dubbed Kong. You know, the, the, obviously there's going to be a few issues with that, but this is bullshit. <laughs> there's, having the step where <laughs> causes an obstruction, but now stop. You've got uh, you've got the space because there's no um, prop going prop shaft going to the to the rear diff, and um, so I don't know what to say. In this vehicle, I've fitted what's called uh, the Smart Floor, and it's made by a, a German company again, AMF Bruns, and it's an M1 tested uh, floor seat installation. <laughs> This is another little feature you'll find on a lot of um, van builds, especially um, kind of home van builds, but I think it, it makes good use of the uh, the space below the floor. Um, you know, you can put your flip-flops in here. It's like a little cubby. Um, no, scrap that. Right. With the door being on the opposite side, it means I can use the uh, flare space extended uh, flare, which is gonna give another possible two inches on then so like that you know we're, we're talking like a six foot six um do that again <laughs> do that. Welcome back to the channel guys, this is Kong. Welcome back to the channel mate. Cheers thank, bud. Thank you so much for choosing me to do this because um, I bet there's people queuing up. It's got to be on the Urban Arc all yeah, it's the got to be. Excellent, <laughs> love it, thanks, appreciate that. Right, so let's start with, um, tell me a little bit about the actual base vehicle itself, the van. All right, the base vehicle is a, it's, it's like a, a unicorn over here. It's a um, medium wheelbase sprinter, four by four. Months and months of waiting. I was gonna keep this one as a demo, but sadly it's going. So yes, this start, this, this is actually <laughs> supposed to be your van, wasn't it? It was, mate, yeah. So um, so that's why it's um, literally to the max. Um, yeah. Obviously I keep dropping in on you over the weeks and stuff like that, but um, yeah. so I know exactly what's gone into this. And this is this is the real deal, this van. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty spec'd out. Um, run me through it. Yeah, with it being the 4x4, four I four, decided to, uh, we've, we've gone with the bigger tyres. You've got to go with the bigger tyres. Mm. In turn, you've got to open up the front arch a little bit with the Tenowagon Mondo. Yeah, on the Delta 4x4, four four, uh, and I've done nice, a nice painted, tricky rim. In the apron. Only, only on the 4x4 four four, though, I think that, I think we're going to keep it black on the two wheel drives, just Excellent. as a... Standard uh, Tenowagon parts, I've gone with the, um, the bonnet. Uh, protection and the wheel arch trims I just think that that just finishes the exterior off nicely yeah. um, I can see for me a tricky little um, light mounts as well which yeah are... they're um, they were from America they are there by badass mounts uh, quality bit of kit clues in the title yeah, yeah. Clues in the title. Badass. yeah they're, they're cool with the, um, the the cube spots on from Rigid? Rigid. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, boss. <Buzz>. Take. <laughs> yeah, from, from Rigid Industries. Yeah. Uh, another quality bit of kit. Um, up on the top, I've got a custom built uh, aluminium roof rack again, housing solar panels, um, nice little deck at the back with a um, side ladder. You've, got, in the roof. you've gone for a wheel carrier on this one. Yeah. Um, this one. Pretty much, even though they do look cool. Forced to, um, based on the size of the spare wheel. Yeah, no, I basically had to get rid of the spare wheel from under the back. Uh, that's where the uh, water, fresh water container tank is now. Yeah. Um, I've gone. But with full the... size wouldn't fit under there anyway. No. No, no. So I've gone with the Gecko uh, wheel carrier on the rear. I think it's the best looking 
uh, wheel carrier UK made. Yeah, of course. Yeah, in the UK. Yeah. So we're not getting any import sacks. No. Like the rest of the kit that's on this van. Yeah, because that's a crusher. <laughs> now then, it is impossible to miss the sliding door, the electric sliding door, mm -hmm. with the automatic deploying electric steps. Not so fun to build on a UK model. No. So on all sprinters, the um, the fuel tank is in the same spot. So the steps that I've put on this have come from Germany, obviously designed for the other side of the vehicle. Um, so there's been quite a bit of messing about modifying the step to suit this chassis. Um, it's done, it works, it's perfect. And I wouldn't be without the electric sliding door. I've been seeing yours on your on your yeah. black one. I was going to ask actually. Every van you, I own is having that door. Could you now have a van, a personal van, without an electric no. sliding door? No, it's a must. No, you can't. Uh, and on the four by four, the steps that auto deploy when you open the door are just awesome. Um, another necessity, I think, climbing into a four by four, especially when building them, because I've been in and out of this vehicle quite a bit. So, creaky yeah, knees, creaky yeah, knees. Definitely at my age. The next two 4x4s that I've got on order, I've decided to go with the sliding door on the opposite side of the vehicle. It's going to solve the step issue and it also gives me an opportunity to use flare spaces, extended flare, which is going to increase the, the rear sideways bed again. Um, yeah, because so, um, on a mid wheelbase, if, if you fitted one to this van, sliding door would just crash straight into right, it. Yeah, yeah. Another, designed for the other side of the vehicle so in here on the inside it feels so spacious mate and i don't know well i do know how but with two kitchen galleys mid wheelbase van it feels so open and airy credit to you mate it's absolutely beautiful Cheers, talk me through the layout instead of the traditional sort of like camper van layout where you've got a twin seat behind the driver i wanted to be able to walk through the center which meant i could have two galleys um more room for kitchen prep i love the dometic cfx fridge i wanted that i didn't want a front opening fridge i wanted a proper chest fridge um which i've got there um there's more room for the air fryer which i wanted as well i wanted to give it an air fryer a go um instead of the traditional sort of like camper van i've decided to go for a removable induction you know, portable in table top, table yeah. top style. I can put it away when I'm not cooking. I've got the space on the uh, countertop free to do other things. Um, it's, a, it's a cleaner look, but yeah. also um, logistically, it is cleaner because you've got yeah. one less thing to clean. You yeah. stow it in the drawer, yeah. nice flat surface. Yeah. The surfaces, so you, it's, it's such a clean van. It's so. I kind of like the minimalistic yeah. look of things. I don't like too much fuss. Yeah. Right, you know what's coming, mate. Try, <laughs> try to string a whole sentence together and tell me about this floor <laughs> and um, how it affected your layout, basically. I saw that the... Um, I first saw this floor uh, on Instagram, funny enough, and the Americans were using it. So I dug a little bit deeper into what it was and I found out it was actually made in Germany. Uh, it's, like a, it's, it's like an aluminium tongue and groove and you get to choose where your rails are, you know, your, your aircraft track rails, where they are, how many you have. Uh, it's completely customizable. In this van, I decided to go for an eight rail setup, which means I can have three seats across where you are now. Three seats there, I could have another seat behind if I wanted. It's extended into the garage area, so you can use it for tying down bikes, or your toys, luggage, or your toys, toys yeah. tools, whatever you want. It's bonded down. Um, there is a there's actually a bolt every meter. So if you if the tracks that you fit in, I've got you know potential to, to carry a seat. The rearmost position has to have a bolt through the floor with a, a plate, you know, like right. a spreader. Yeah. But people go, is it not cold? Is it not insulated? You know, it does. It's not cold. It's not as cold with the, with this final on the top. It's not as cold. It's going to be cold on the track. Yeah, stick your slippers on. Yeah, I mean, no everyone problem. has camping slippers. Yeah, no problem. Mine might be a pair of Crocs though. So. Yeah, that's fine. As long as he can all. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Now you haven't 
incorporated driving seats with sleeping bed area that you claim this sleeps for yeah i think the majority of people when they you know families going away they've, they've, they've got young kids um and i'm a big advocate for the kabunk which i did also steal from one of your videos <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> so rather than trying to squeeze another two beds into an already awesome yeah. feeling open yeah. space so, yeah the kabunk the kabunk is a modular the, uh, the kabunk is awesome I, i've just, know, literally just literally just brought out a video on that this week yeah. now one of the biggest points of that is like we went away last weekend when we totally messed up part one of this video i don't know what you mean i don't know what you mean <laughs> um yeah it's all my fault but but, <laughs> but you were on your own yeah so you I don't had... want I don't want extra beds in when I'm on my own. Exactly. If I'm with the wife, I don't want extra beds. Yeah. When we go away as a family, the kabunk, the kids love it. But you can leave it in the garage. You don't have to compromise yeah. your layout based on trying to compromise beds into seats into beds. Yeah, absolutely love that product. Yeah, it? I do as well. This is heated diesel? Yeah. Same again. I've gone with the planar two kilowatt uh diesel eater. In Plum, plumbed into the main tank with the control up here. This is the new version of their remote, which is quite cool. Yeah, um, and that, while we're over there, that's pretty much the control centre for the whole van, isn't it? Yeah, this is the Victron um, Touch 70. I was lucky enough to get a the Touch 70. They were, they were quite rare at the time. Uh, this has got everything on it that, you know, power-wise, including the fresh water and the wastewater see i love that because it's just um that's one gauge possibly even two gauges um that you don't have to see because it's yeah. um incorporated in there yeah. just it's just another one of those things that keeps keeps all those surfaces lovely and fresh and clean yeah um, i've fitted a uh, electric uh gray water dump on this one as well um which is just a uh, switch down here um so you just drive over the grid and press the button yeah or drop it in the workshop like I did the other week and it was swimming. <laughs> <laughs> you got to test them out, mate. Excellent. It was only half a tank of grey, that's all. Oh, that's good. 35 litres. That's good, then. <laughs> got wireless chargers, one on either side. As you see, we've got, there's no hob on this side. We've got a sink from the marine industry. Is that a marine sink, mate? It's a marine sink, mate. <laughs> 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 Along with a marine tap. Excellent. Um, water filter for uh, cold water underneath the sink. Storage for the toilet down there. One of the Portaloos, uh, Thetford 365 will fit in there. And we've got plenty of storage, full extension drawers with uh, phenolic ply bases. Um, nice and sturdy with uh, marine slam latches. Excellent. Hats off to you, mate. You got <laughs> you, you somehow, you seem to have loads of work top loads of storage um a few fairly decent size appliances that's not yeah. lie. that's that's a big old fridge and yeah you know, this that... is this is the cfx 355 i believe i think it's a 55 yeah there's loads of space in these and we've got the um the foodie ninja air fry um cook a pizza in what four minutes yeah it takes nothing out of a 400 amp hour battery bank love it um the beauty of these things is they heat up to like say 200 degrees in 40 seconds sweet. it's good sweet flare space at the back there absolutely yeah Mate, that, that vinyl work on there is absolutely beautiful yeah i love that i love the flare space it's one of my favorite modifications so that's a uk double yeah allowing to sleep sideways again six foot four um like i said in the last and on the mossberg video it just makes sense to me and it looks awesome from the outside as well and is the ceiling still a trade secret it is a trade secret but i will tell you one thing this is the same color as the bodywork on the outside and that's all i, all I can say dirty <laughs> little <laughs> so fully automated but there's also a, a manual button uh in case you encounter some rocky rocky ground and you don't want it to deploy excellent that is awesome mate um but but better than that is that is that a storage space for flip-flops there <laughs> <laughs> Give me a brief um, breakdown of what you've got going on in the back. Yeah, on the left hand side I've got the electrical cabinet which is taking up full height. So that's all business in there? That's all business. Get your very own piece of Kong in your own van. 
head over to BSPK Solar for all of your off-grid needs. What you're looking at here is the Kong package. Other packages are available, such as Ape 1 and Ape 2. These can be tailor-made to suit your specific off-grid needs. These kits are hand-delivered with wiring diagrams, but what stands out the most is the level of aftercare available. The guy behind the curtain on this one is a real whiz. I know it firsthand. I am proud to work with BSPK Solar and Ape Adventure Vans. On the other side, I've got half business, as you can see. Um, that's got the water heater in it, water pump, etc., and plenty of storage on the top. We've got we're following through with the uh, aircraft rail on the sidewall there, bolted through to the uh, van structure. Extra lashing points. Um, again, rear shower. Excellent, so that'd be heated shower. Um, yeah. Your water's heated by electric. Yeah. Basically, um, in a nutshell, a really small immersion heater. Yeah, 12 um, litre. So this, this looks absolutely great. The options there, like we said before, tie down points for yeah. you could even go ahead and tie down a bike tray, couldn't you? And remove that. Yep, you can, yeah. The um the the client that's bought the next van, that's exactly what he's gonna be going for. It's on the front wheel drive. He's got more space from the floor to the underside of the bed and he's going with a, a pull out bike tray that you can remove, which is going bolted yeah. to these tracks. Right. I want to see, because if you don't mind, I may use this idea myself. <laughs> let's have a look at your um, shower cubicle. Okay, let's go. On here, we have a, for the more non-adventurous adventure van drivers, which means I don't, they just don't want to stand in the nude at the back of the van. There is a um, pull-out shower enclosure. Falls down like that. And I just wanted to say that um, I did actually steal this idea from one of our mutual friends um, when I saw it on one of his on his crafter. I just want to say thank you to Neil Taylor for this. <laughs> <laughs> At Van Moose Man, I will put, I will credit him for this. <laughs> yeah. So. Awesome bit of privacy. That's absolutely wicked. Pull the shower out, douse yourself down. Job's a good one. Let me have a quick bird's eye view. See, we're gonna have to shout a bit because of the microphone, but you've got loads of space in there, yeah? Loads of room, mate, loads of room. Excellent. So thanks for watching, guys. This has been Kong. Um, oh. This is, this is not a motorhome, this is something totally different. Um, I'm gonna throw the gauntlet down. I'm gonna throw the gauntlet down. Let me know if there is another van builder in the UK putting out nicer stuff than this. Let me know, put it, put it in the comments, contact, contact me on some of the other socials if you need to, send me a picture, send me a link. Please show me something nicer than this built in the UK. Oh, honestly, it's an absolute dream. I'm, I'm I'm lucky to have a mate that punts out vans so so nice, and I can get round to what and and watch them through the process of being built. It's an absolute absolute joy to watch these things come together. Um, thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing. Hit the like button. Um, head over to Ape Adventure Vans or Outfit My Sprinter. All the links to everything um, that you need to know, and hopefully everything that you've seen. Um, I'm going to go real heavy on the links, so. Please check down below before you contact me asking me who make this, who make that. It might even all the information in the link might even be down below. Thanks again for watching. Um, I'll see you next Tuesday.